Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Aurora Plays Pathfinder Kingmaker. I'm your humble bard, Tim. In the previous session, after warting the traitorous Tristian um, in some location, oh, sorry, it was in the, the underground areas of the Verdant Chambers and the uh the temple of the elk so basically a dungeon that spanned this entire massive area <laughs> all the way to the verdant chambers um we decided to head to uh we got we got a letter saying that oleg was in a bit of trouble as well as a bunch of other bits and pieces so at the moment we've got a few things on the docket we've got to head to the secluded lodge because there is a um a person who is being a bit of a dick and makes makes it look like uh, basically he's asking me for help. There's some people that are ripping our um, our barony apart, trying to find this person. So we're heading to the secluded lodge to deal with them. We've also got to set, uh, take uh, Kaliki to the southern barons. We've also got to head to the Valley of the Dead with. Um, uh, got a name now our undead person uh and then we've also got to return the onslaught Arna um back all the way back here in um in null keep and on top of that um uh, we've got to visit the six bears camp as well but apparently the issue with the barbarians hasn't been resolved the the tomb um that the the barbarian boss ran off to is somewhere in this area so we're going to go for a wander and find that so i think what we're going to do first things first we're going to head up to oleg's training post um we'll use some spells and we'll get rid of our oh we've also got some fey that are pranking the kingdom which is great uh so we have to deal with that <laughs> it's all going on here Sometimes being the Baron is just a bit of a pain in the ass. Now. Yes, I'm still here. Let's use our restorations. Since we're here. And then after the rest, we can use it to restore the other two points. All right. Yeah, so we there was a quest where Oleg was, has been looking for these books. We finally found all three of them. We brought them back, and now he's apparently having some issues. So, Boken looks tired and haggard. His face is gray. His brow, brow furrowed. His eyes shine with a feverish glow. Who's there? What is it? Oh, it's you. How convenient. I need your help. We need to run some tests. Uh, what tests do we need? Oh, I found the formula all on my own. These damn books didn't have it. Nothing but hints and half-truths there. Well, you can't fool old Bokum that easily. <laughs> um, I bet a gold piece you not even listen to what I say. But why would I? I, I though I can hear clear as day. Now, what was I saying? All right, the formula. Uh, the elixir of eternal youth. A most wondrous brew. A source of strength in one's hands and swiftness in one's feet. I first heard of it. When I was still just a lad, I didn't believe it. Uh, believe in it, but now I've lived long enough. I've seen uh, Stranger Things, a good TV show. Uh, so I thought, why not give it a try? So I asked you to find these books for me. I heard that one of the volumes contains a formula. Well, it turns out they don't. All they do is making uh, all they do is make things clear as mud. Still, I was able to find something useful in there. I can't remember how many nights I stayed up working on the solution, but here it is. Ta-da! Can't drink it yet, though. I must run tests first. Can't be too careful of these things. So will you help me? Uh... Sure. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Uh, let's try it on a dog first. There's a mutt on a leash around the corner. Uh, you can test the stuff on. It won't... I wouldn't feel bad if something goes wrong, and that'll teach you to stop barking at me until I pass by. <laughs> I could do it myself, but what if it's off the leash? It won't harm you. Ah... Uh... Sure, I'll go. 
Uh, where's the dog? Oh, it is here. Okay. Hello, puppy dog. Sorry about this. Uh... Neutral evil to pour the potion of the dog's mouth. Well, not really neutral evil, but fine. Oh. Angry dog. Okay. What is going on? Uh, your potion made the dog go mad and attack me. Mad dog? Sounds wrong. Very wrong. I must have made a mistake. Ah, to demons with the dog. I need something more human to experience. <laughs> you know what? My neighbor, a hunter, once told me he saw, saw were rats in the... Oh my god! They make better test subjects after all. They're closer to humans than a dog. We should find them and try and <laughs> take this vial. Okay. Now we're doing illegal experimentation on were rats. <laughs> I suppose I don't really know whether it's illegal or not, because it's my kingdom. I don't think there's any laws relating to, uh... I was right. Ah, uh, good day to you, sir. Uh, hunch grey figures turn to face you as you approach. Yellow fangs, uh, show from grinning muzzles. A claw reach for their weapons. <laughs> you can always fight later. Uh, wait, wait, we come in peace. Oh, it's freeze in intense anticipation, ready to pounce at you at the moment. Finally, you hear a hoarse cr a cracked voice. Move one finger and we'll cut your bald hide to scraps. What you need? Uh, the ruler of these lands wishes to show you all who inhabit it uh, like children to him. In his grace, he gives you a rare and noble drink. Crap. <laughs> oh, you're not going to test this stuff on us? Of course. Oh, I try it on people even uh, when you've got monsters. Not like anyone's going to miss them, right? Arrogant bastards. Tear them apart. Oh, oh well. I'm not used to lighting enemies on fire first. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry about all this. Uh, what are you looking at? Finish me. Uh, here, take a sip of this first, quickly. Uh, it died. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, where at died. Oh, is that so? I simply died in the mud gone rabbit. I see. My potion wasn't meant to do anything with the mind, only the body. I need to go for one final test. It seems I must try this potion on a human. An elf would do just as well. A dwarf or... He takes a small glass vial and he... Go oh, God. Oh. Oh, dear. Ooh. There we go. Bill Ben's eyes are beginning to clear. It seems he's coming to his senses after we cut the shit out of him. What, what happened? It clouded your mind. You attacked me, you dick. <laughs> God forgive it, old man. I don't know what I was doing. I never thought the pressure could work in such a way, but it still does seem to make one stronger. Thank you for your help. Now that I have to iron out the wrinkles. <laughs> right. Oh, jeez. I am never wrong. Patience. All right. Hello, Oleg. We have some some things that I wish to sell you. And with that shit show out of the way, let's get ourselves back on the road. Oh, oh, it's a few different locations. Alright, let us 
rest here first. Hey. As you approach the Six Bears campsite, you hear the rising noise and rumbling. Gathered outside their tents, the men of the tribe are having a heated discussion over something. One of them, a huge grey-haired man with a scar on his face, shouts, Brothers, this cannot go on. We need a new chieftain or this tribe is no more. Akaya has lost his instincts. He led us into a trap. We almost got killed in the war with Bravoy. All of us, damn it. And the reason he still breathes is the Kinslayer was too weak to finish him off. Away! With the old fool. Chieftain Akaya, grinding his rotten teeth, uh, tears the heavy necklace from his neck and throws it into the dust. Take it! May all choke on it! I'll see you all manage without old Akaya. Who's going to be the new chieftain then? Maybe you? Me? No. The chieftain must know uh, what threatens the tribe to be able to defend it. Uh, if it were home, I would fight for power, but here in the southern lands, we need a different kind of chief. I say Nilak. They grumble in the crowd. Grumble, 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 grumble. They continue shouting over. Think! Who led us through Nemeria? Was it Akaya? No, it was Nalak, who negotiated with the local tribes while he huffed and beat his chest. Nilak. And who was the only one who saw the danger of Amrag and the sisters? Nilak. Of course, a woman has never been leader of the Six Bears before. But, like Six Bears, have never left our homeland before. But if we want to survive, we must change. Nilak! 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 One by one, the barbarians stop arguing and join the chant, and soon the whole tribe is sh shouting Nilak's name. The girl steps from the crowd, her face is confused, but glancing above the men's head, she sees Amiri. Encouraging... Amiri's encouraging smile and nods. One of the barbarians puts a necklace of fangs around her neck, it's worn by Ikari. Brothers, I accept this honor, and I swear I will lead and protect this tribe. Like every chieftain since the time of the bear's ancestors, I will find a way to save us from the ghosts that haunt us, and I will find a place for us to uh, in these strange lands. Uh, get back. We return to Nomeria. Uh The barbarians disperse and start to pack their tents. She approaches and hugs and goes, So, this is how it turns out. I can't believe it. I never wanted to be leader, but you, you should be chief. Ah, there will never be a place in the six bears for me, but you could do it without me, sis. Oh, congratulations, Nilak. Thanks. It seems like everything in the world is changing. Uh, where will you lead your tribe? To Starfall, the evil spirit who haunts us is not that powerful. He doesn't dare attack near the big settlements. Okay. Well, here, have a thousand gold. Um, Maybe you can go back to your tribe now, Amiri. Nah. You heard what they said. I'm a pariah. I'm kinslayer. <laughs> uh, this cannot be changed. Even a chieftain's order will not make them forget what I did. All right, so why don't you stay in my lands anyway, guys? Thank you, but there's no place for us here. These forest swamps and rivers, strange and unfamiliar people. The six bears want to be with our kin, the Kellids. All right, well, have a safe journey. She bows, hugs a merry farewell, and leads away from the tribe. Oh, and we're just kicked out. Okay. Cut scene, basically. All right. Let's go. I'm guessing it's going to be around here somewhere. Oh, the Serpent's Trail. Damn it, you evil pranksters. Because I doubt he would have run far from where the, uh, the battlegrounds were, because they were looking for that. Oh, here we go. I guess this is going to be the duel where... Um, she finally wins. Uh, Hagen, Paladin of Sheen, High Priestess of Sheen. All right. Uh, Layan the High Priest, white haired priest, uh, looks over his glasses. Look who's here, Baron Aurora Borealis. My respect. I see you've brought company. Uh, finally. Lord Bouncy on the edge of excommunication, you are sluggish, Valerie. 
I am never in a hurry to meet those who would seek petty revenge upon the innocence of another alleged uh, innocence of another's alleged transgressions. And this, how dare you drag this abomination into the temple of the goddess? Yeah. Yes, stink is awful. <laughs> what are those flowers? Ugh. Please, everyone, be calm. Let's not uh, hurry with accusations and hasty decisions. In the end, we're in a sacred place. Arguments under this vaulting are unacceptable. All right. So, are you behind the dirty rumors about my barony? We say the truth. And you call it a dirty rumor by the protectors of the Sheehan and all who call her patron. It's ridiculous to hear the charge of slander from one who has befriended a viper. Your friend blackened the name of the goddess herself. I will pass unremarked and vaguely... Uh, I will pass unremarked the vaguely veiled insults. In the end, I have doubtful honor. I have the doubtful honor of talking to a coward who can only throw around empty words and ungrounded accusations. You're too spineless to meet me face to face and make your claims in person. That's why you prefer to strike on the sly. Please calm down. Although I do not approve of the methods of respected Hegrin, I will not tolerate jokes at the expense of a paladin of Sheen in her Vedic temple. <sighs> so I see the whole company's here. My respects, Baron. I came to a special... I came with special... Oh, new person here. Yes, silver-tongued. My respects, Baron. I came at the special invitation of Sir Hegand. How can I refuse a paladin of my beloved patron? My respects to you too, Valerie. I heard about what happened to you, but seeing it with my own eyes is unbearable. Believe me, I never wanted this. To be honest, I don't even remember striking the blow. We settled our argument in battle for... Uh, Frondero. As for the scar... I've been wearing my wounds for a long time. Okay, so... Who are you? My name is Laren. I'm a priest of Sheehan, the leader of the local congregation, for now at least, until my place is taken by a permanent priest from the Order of Prisms. For now, I am spiritual advisor and mentor to respected Hegand and his people, paladins of the Sheehan who require the advice of more experienced devotees. All right. I know the slightest desire to meddle in the affairs of Shane and her followers, but I demand only one thing. You stop slandering me and my subjects, you bastards. As long as valor is in your hands, no creator who crossed into your borders can feel safe. Jeez, I really don't like it very much. We heard how much you despise everyone who is capable of creating anything beautiful, and we're not going to keep silent about it. Of course, she could repent for her transgressions voluntarily and beg the goddess for mercy. I've tried to forget everything they stuck in my head the, uh, in the order, but I remember the one thing certain. Cheyenne is not revengeful or stern. I don't believe your words, Paladin. All right, Valerie. Our goddess is not stern with those who misstep, which is why you need to fear the divine trial. The name, uh, its name is just an old tradition. All right. Valerie looks down, an expression that could be taken as uh, a bashment freezes on her face. What trial are we talking about? A divine trial. A special ritual carried out by followers of a god for someone who has lapsed in their faith. It is not well known, but it's used on those for whom there is still hope. For returning to the church, or at least for making peace. Making peace indeed, Valerie, who rejected my lady, should not count on being so coddled. And what is she accused of? Of persistent disrespect and insolence towards the Sheehan's order, and the goddess herself, the Order of Eternal Roves, disown this woman, but we, the Order of Prisms, will finish what was started. If Valerie refuses to repent, she shall suffer punishment. If Shine's newest, or, uh, newest order appears each time another one stops uh, persecuting me, my disrespect for your goddess will only grow. You are creating the very thing that you so diligently fight, but are incapable of understanding. Well, it's up to you, Valerie. Very well, I'll endure the trial if it helps put an end to all of this. All right. Thank you for agreeing, Valerie. Let's begin. Oh, here we go.
Shane has divine trial has commenced. May she be merciful to the lost and confused. It is time to listen to all sides and decide what fate awaits Valerie. Today, under the vaulting of the Temple of Prisms, we followers of the goddess will give you, Valerie, a chance to redeem yourself in the eyes of Shayan. And enough! Leon, everyone present knows she doesn't deserve redemption. She lost the right to forgiveness the day she rejected Shayan's grace. I didn't come here to stand silent like an idiot. When I challenged Valerie to a duel, she agreed. We fought according to all the rules, and our argument was settled. Think, uh, think what you will of Valerie, but at least she showed me some respect. Um, I never wanted to insult anyone. All I wanted, all I dreamed of, was to choose my own way. Uh... Okay. Everyone can choose their own path. You and uh, Fredero follow Cheyenne's faith, and Valerie has turned away from it. That doesn't mean you can interfere in her life. This may be a surprise to you, but I agree with you. Once my blood cooled, I started to realize that my complaints about Valerie were a little excessive. Enough about Fredeo. We don't have much time, and Valerie gives us much to consider. According to her master of the Order of the Eternal Rose, she has always been noble and merciful. Stories about the valor she showed in Bravoy spread far beyond its borders. How many did this fearless warrior save in the fire of Jamandi Eldori's house? They are many, uh, they are many, and others owe her, they are many, ah, they and many others owe their lives to her. Right, okay, that was a weird sentence structure. I only did what I had to do, no more, no less. Um, Not a sign of special respect for Cheyenne. Let's save this one here. Shit. Okay, I'll try this one. Um, fair. Well then, let's uh, let's let the, this matter aside. Enough, I'm tired of the endless babble. I shall prove that Valerie is a capricious and dishonorable woman who has twisted her life in pursuit of a single go to harm everything that is precious to Cheyenne. I have a reliable witness who can confirm my statement. I present Sir Ivard. Ooh. Ivard pushes his chest and pulls his chin up. This lady insulted me in front of my audience for no reason at all, arrested me with brutal force, and the worst part is, when the dust settled and the blood cooled, Valley didn't even think to apologize for her behavior. I'd say it only confirms her maliciousness. Uh... Okay. Uh, whispered to Eva, if I were you, I wouldn't accuse one who serves the Baron of the Stolen Lands. Anything could happen in these parts. Ooh, okay. Uh, wh what? I'm sorry. I I'm confused. I have no complaints about Valerie. <laughs> now it's over. I have to go. <laughs> A neutral evil action. Oh, God. It's like, fuck off. Valerie watches the bard with an amazed look. Did you do? Why? Valerie raises her head and takes a deep breath. I stood here listening to your arguments for long enough. Now it is my turn to speak. My departure from the Order of Eternal Rose was not an insult to Cheyenne or her followers. All I want to do is devote my life to what's important to me. The goddess followers never gave me a choice since uh, a chance to walk my, my own life's path. Do I value art? No. Am I ready to serve it? No. Do I respect those who brought so much trouble to me and the Baron? No. But there are some of you, like me, who dream of just one thing, to carry out your chosen duty. If all the servants of Shyam were like you, my parting would be from the Order could have been much more peaceful, as he looks at, she looks at Laren. Maybe I don't deserve forgiveness in the eyes of Shane. Maybe fanatics like Sir Hegged would be happier to... Um, to see me on the noose, but I see now that one shouldn't laugh at another's uh, way just because one doesn't understand or share it. But now, speaking openly before you, my conscience is definitely clear, and if you wish to judge me for the fact that my opinion is different from yours, 
Divine trial is over, Shayan. She has made her decision. What? How? The scar. It's gone. It is gone. Witchery! But, but, but why? Look at her, friend. She is proud, but who could expect otherwise from a creature of such amazing beauty? Now, as she and light fills Valerie's soul, the child is filled with renewed radiance. The thorn that pricked uh, has been burned away. The goddess shows Valerie the way to the source of light and beauty. No! I wish to serve, uh, deceive Shayan. Only I know the will of my goddess. Death to Valerie! Oh, dear. Okay. Oh. Gonna be spilling some blood in the Temple of Shayan today. This is it. Finally. I think it's obvious to everyone here that they attack. The bloodshed is always a heavy burden on the shoulders of Shane's followers. Forgive me, Valerie. Blind faith clouded my judgment and pushed towards violence, desecrating this holy place. Shane's light will not soon return to this vaulting. But we will do everything in our power to wash away this disgrace. On behalf of the Order of the Eternal Rose, I offer you, Valerie, and your grace, my sincerest apologies. The Order of Prisms is young and too zealous in their judgment of events and signs. There's nothing else for us to do here, Aurora. If you don't mind, I'd like to be done with this place. All right. It didn't exactly feel like uh, visiting a temple... Uh, of a kind, goddess. I hope that after this, Shane's paladins will think twice about doing harm to your barony. Anyway, there's usually much more reserve than those fanatics in the Order of Prisms. Let's go. We can discuss it at the capital. I want to see an end of this place. All right. We should move. Rock and roll. <sighs> oh, hang on. I'm sure there's some loot here. Actually, I can pick it up as I leave. Let's have a look around, see if there's any chests laying around that we can... Ah, here we go. What do we have in here? They certainly don't look like golden chalices or statues. Oh. Nice food room. Food room. <laughs> Dining room. I do what I must. A weird way to call it. Ooh, look at the food room. Is there any way in here? I guess not. Okay. Guess now. So let's head back to the Flintlock Grasslands and then we'll just sort of fan out from there.
My strength fades. Okay. Country road, take me home to the place. Ugh, ugh, friggin' pranksters. Let's rest. I'm not sure what that druid's problem was. Follow if you dare. Uh, you search and notice an envelope inside a bush. It's hanging from a branch by a fine chain that runs through the envelope. Uh, waxes seal and the skull chain runs through the eye of the sockets. I'll examine the envelope closely. Check it. Uh, Arcana. Okay, the seal itself is enchanted. It will react to any attempts to either dispel the enchantment or break the seal. If the envelope is touched by anyone other than the designated recipient, it will crumble to dust. However, if you remove the seal without touching the envelope... Carefully remove the seal without touching the envelope. I have a mysterious letter. Okay. Uh, Frutius, your craftsmanship is improving and your zeal has not gone unnoticed by Nidal. We are pleased with your success. It means that Zonkuth is pleased as well. The Umbral Court requires a new agent in the Stolen Lands by... Oh, Circle of Druids, be proud. Your second objective to search for... Okay, hang on. Baron's court is too small to infiltrate without risk of exposure. Instead, watch from a distance, pass along any information. Uh, the Barony's persistence has attracted the attention of many of Vistan and Nidal can't afford to lag behind its rivals. It's a search for artifacts created by Fey Magic in times of memories. The Umbral Court has been searching it for a long time, an hour, and that's all we got. Okay, interesting. More strength fades. Oh, well, he's blocked by a huge crevasse with. Uh, in the ruddy rock carved only with wind and rain the wide three four humans lying end to end these three times as deep it's stretched in both directions as far as we could see looking down the cliff I saw something that made me wince among the rocks a yellow ochre uh, floor was the body perception uh, it would be easy to climb down there but a few dozen steps away I found a good combination of uh, bulges cracks and ledges that would make for a somewhat more convenient path after a bit of planning we uh, plotted a route and even an amateur climber could handle uh, easy way to go down would be to tie a rope there we go 
Once again, a length of rope proved itself indispensable for adventuring, especially when our adventurer knows how to tie a good knot. And climb down uh, was a rather easy way to go. All right, we lost the rope. Uh, our whole team finally made it down to investigate the dead man's body. We guessed right, the poor fellow had clearly died on impact. A lot of different types of gear had been scattered around. Uh... Armor tools, even scythe and hammers, clearly was much more than a single person could carry. We searched the body. Uh, shovel, camping supplies, and rations. Nice. Uh, the gear and the knapsack uh, on the man's body were well preserved, but most of what we found lying in the crevice floor was corroded and useless. Spearheads and swords crumbled at the touch, and the armor had so many holes it looked like a delicate lace, uh, if not for the poor condition. Uh, could outfit a whole regiment. We also noticed something that could have been seen from above a large stone in the wall. Let's have a look in the hole. Uh, as we pushed the stone together, it moved. Ooh. Got a small cave. Uh, it was full of charred, half decomposed bodies. Those are eggs, not bodies. Oh, and huge gray eggs. All right. Uh, what are the eggs? None of us had ever seen these things before. Okay, we had some strange sounds, like something moving huge mounds of sand nearby. Uh, we rushed to search the corpse. We found a ruby ring. Let's break an egg. We failed, and Aurora screamed, RUN! Oh, a big fucking purple worm. We started climbing back up the cliff. Uh, we never climbed so fast in our lives. The worm was almost as fast, roughly crawling up the wall. Reaching out for us, an Aurora Borealis was caught. Huge jaws closed around his foot in a thunderous cry. Oh, God. Oh. Bookworm poison. Okay. I'm there. Uh, some gathering brought in council's boxes, barrels, packs of crates. Judging by the dust, no one touched most of these for months. Uh, the floor between the crates is scattered with iron, including weapons. Let's have a look. Four hours to dig through this stuff. All right. Oh. Ancient Kellid rope fragments. A gnome hooked hammer. Well, this was certainly worthy of my attention. Oh, here they are. Oh, I don't know where to sleep this stupid old. My back aches four day in a row because of the cold. Uh, who's been sleeping in my bed? <laughs> With their mouths open, the three hill giants there. Finally, after a long pause, one of them points and goes, Yo! Ask him, Grum. Shut up, Beck. The third giant has been silent all this time, judging by his expression. He seems to be trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, clearing his throat, Grub turns back to you. Uh, who are you? How about that? As soon as I got bored not fighting, a fight came and found us. Eaten by a giant? That's a good name. Oh, Grotus, I must consider the matter. Uh, with violent giggling at Knock Knock bears his weapon. These good enemies big enough for hero Knock Knock. Um, I'm an agent on a secret mission. Oh, what's your mission? Uh, a local ruler sent me to spy around a kingdom of eternal summer where people have never seen snow before. Oh, you say it's always warm there with soft grass all around? Of course. Uh, if you pay me, I'll uh, send you a guide and I'll show you the shortest way. Oh, Grug, come on. Don't even start. Grug, remember when I let you have a juicy lamb? You said you'd owe me if I gave you one. Uh, you promised. After he shows us the way we can do with his guy whatever we like. Oh. Damn you, fine. Here's the money, little one. Uh, when will this guide of yours arrive? Uh, okay. I'm going home now, and I'll send my best ranger. He'll arrive tomorrow morning. Oh, great. Ooh, what have I done? <laughs> That's hilarious.
We rock up, we rob these guys, and we just say, yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna send you someplace great. Just uh, let us go, we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> And that's why it helps to have an incredibly high charisma. Uh, I can't go this far because, yeah, it's the uh, way to Pitax. So we got it. Like he's telling us to bugger off. Does that? They didn't tell me I had to go back for the the curse. What the hell? Uh. I think I was if it's across the top here somewhere. No. Got no idea what the hell's happening. They who attacked did significant damage to your barrier, your grace. Through the great efforts of yourself and your subjects, the attackers were defeated. Uh, those who were not killed on the battlefield fled to shelter in the nearby forest. We uh, earned a well-deserved respite. Uh, was it you who was behind the attacks, wasn't it? But why, Tristian? Yes, at least it, to a certain extent, my lady. Uh, Nerissa ordered me to open the way for the creatures into the first world. Um, I have often traveled between worlds, so it was not a difficult thing to do. Galorian was closely connected to the first worlds, uh, the first uh, spontaneous portals between the two worlds are not uncommon. All I did was give one such portal some extra ability. Once every few months it opened wide enough to allow Nerissa's creature to come charging through. What I did was terrible. People were dying all the time because of me, and I could not do anything but uh, warn them about the next attack. I mourn the losses every day. My only hope is that one day I'll be able to make up for these evil acts. Um, in any case, I doubt the Tristan's uh, repentance will somehow prevail, uh, prevent the next attack. All right. Look, I'll help you earn forgiveness. Together we need to defeat Nerissa. Um, we'll prepare for the next attack. Doesn't matter who's behind it. I won't let them win. I'm sure of it. Your barrier is far stronger than your enemies imagine, as uh, you remind them from time to time. All right. Ooh, presents. Uh, uh, great. Can't wait to see what you're doing next. Uh, all right. Cool. Thank you very much. Oh, who's this gentleman? Ooh. A sunbeam. Make something specific for me. Fighting staff, a quiver of arrows, a wooden shield. Uh, just think it's up to yourself. Okay. So I'm guessing that was all the uh, the Fey attacks. Was that that thing there? So I just let the kingdom sort that out on its own. Which it failed to do. Uh, okay, so what happened in the temple? Please let me speak first. I wish to thank you and apologize. I'm afraid I've dragged you into a huge amount of trouble. Trust me, I didn't want any of this and saddened me uh, what you've had to endure. But at the same time, I'm happy I had you at my side through it all. 
Um, I finally stopped blaming shame for all my troubles and found peace. Not that I suddenly came to love the goddess and her stupid followers, but now I understand. If you want others to respect your choices, you must respect theirs, however ridiculous it may seem to you. And of course, I am ready to return to my duties with you. There are many battles ahead of you, and my responsibility is to protect you from any threat. All right. Well, together we shall overcome any obstacle. I'm sure of that. Uh. All right. Thank you for the conversation. Awesome. All right. So, where are we here? It's the Twiceborn Warlord. All right. So it says here, we have the entire ancient library in our hands. Certainly one of these books must mention the Tomb of Amrag. However, we don't have a lifetime spare to read all these stories. We have to hire some scholars. How long does it take for Amrag to become age powers? I hope we're not too late. Uh, okay, I have no idea about that. But I so we do have a library. Maybe if I look around... Uh, it's a divine ray, sun, heat, a tomb. No. Ah, okay. This is obviously the people that are. This is like where, you, where the credits are stored. These are the people that helped to crowdfund this game. No, all right. Yeah, it looks like this was a bit of a bust. I oh, know we got more loot here. Hang on. Uh, that's right. There's the book on the the shelf here. I didn't collect. Fine. No. In due time. Oh, that's how we get to the library. Down the big stairs. All right. Oh, I guess we go back to... Alright, I think I know what I'm going to do here. Oh, citizen, you, you're, you're panicking. Uh, let's leave Knock Knock behind. Let's say Jathal. Oh, no, wrong person. I need Kaliki, not Jathal.
Let's go do that little thing there. Since we can't seem to find where the hell uh, we're supposed to go. Maybe this will... Let's find out what all this business is about. Ooh, cutscene. Ooh, that got bad. You! Hmm. How rude, girl. I thought you were old enough to understand what little meaning there is in such labels as good and evil. Didn't the evil devil help you and your sister? Didn't the followers of the good goddess despise you? Anyway, now is not the time for long conversations. I promise you a chance to rid the Soul Eater once and for all without any fuss. That time is now. Oh, good. What's that no noise, Nao? They're trying to annoy me by pounding rocks in the pot. I'm not doing anything. But I can hear it. Watch out! Oh, dear. The sweet tooth! No, no! Why so upset, my dear? I'd use my mastery of illusions to fool the slow-witted soul eater. It will get its victim, three of them in fact, and it will believe that it captured and killed Canera. And then it will leave, and your problem is solved. Please, Aurora, we have to save them. What if uh, we summon Canera? The creature will be drawn to her and we'll be able to kill it. Uh, but then, my sister. Oh, Nethus, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Uh, yeah, summon her. We'll distract the Soul Eater from the Sweet Tooth and then kill it. All right. Uh, when will I allow to be get to see what the hell is going? Wait, what? Aha, a test of my Taste abilities. My fury. Taste my fury. <laughs> I can't believe it, the crazy goat set me up again. She risked my life again for those low-life simpletons, and in a fight was best kill me once already. Uh, wait, so you're not Kaliki? Kenneth, you're alive? What do you mean, I killed you once? I'll show you, Kaliki. Um, tell her she can wipe that foolish snout <laughs> for the rest of her life. She, she's, oh, okay. Oh, the sweet tooth, you're alive. Praise Nethus. Your sis was just here, and she was very angry with you. With me? Well, you better tell her I don't have to live with blood on my hands for her sake. If she hadn't made a deal with the devil, and if she uh, didn't want to have everything in this uh, world never have happened, I gave half my life for her return. But I can't and I won't give the lies of my friends as well. Could someone explain what's going on, please? Anyone at all? Uh... Look, if anyone is to blame for what's happened, it's the forefather. Yes, he arranged all this, but it's not the main reason. I, I can't do this anymore. I can't look the other way while uh, Canera is indifferent to the lives of others and my own feelings. I gave her half of everything I'd ever have, all for her, but I cannot sacrifice those who depend on me. My poor child, I don't know how something so foolish could uh, have descended from my blood. I wish you grow up, lose your childhood fantasies and weakness. This will be easier once I spare you the strictness imposed by certain divine forces. So that's... This was all a setup? Obviously, it would be madness and short-sighted to argue with the Herald of Nethus himself. <laughs> but it wouldn't. It would be pathetic to do nothing. 
or you see a girl, and you, Aurora Borealis, my offspring is a valuable investment in this world, and I wish to secure my interests for ages I reaped souls as a sickle reaps grain, turning even the most loyal followers from their service to the almighty gods. But I imagine that the all-seeing Nethus decided to make a joke of me by taking two souls that are mine by right. But everything will work out just fine. Soon enough, I will, rec I will reclaim what has been taken from me. We're not your property. Ooh. In your case, the matter must still be discussed, but in Kenneth's case, the situation is quite clear. She made a contract with me for a lifetime of service, and she's only... And she's the only one who thinks a formal death followed by a resurrection can spare her from her contract. But in any case, it's not up to you to decide your fate. Well, technically, yeah, because that was the lifetime. Uh... The treatment of uh, Kenra and Kaliki as your property is totally unacceptable. <sighs> you know what? Should have got rid of you the first time we met. You can try, but your challenge of combat will have to wait until our next meeting. I have accomplished everything I intended. Now I shall wait. A new turn is coming. Fucking coward. Oh, okay. Do something! Talk to the twins alone, alright. And we leveled up, so yay us. No, all right, I'll go talk to the twins. Alone. So we're going to go back to the capital for that. Yeah, I'm sort of thinking like for the letter of the word, a lifetime is the length of one's life. So if it's their new life, it's I mean, realistically, they should be free of the contract, but, you know. I'm no legal expert. Especially not one in demonic contracts. Oh. Well, that's a shame I didn't get uh, any more missions out of the Sweet Tooth. I was waiting for them to come back with their, their path. Honestly, I don't know whether I like the uh, the setup of the town as a actual city. I think I preferred it when it was more open. Oh yes, the sweet tooth aren't here anymore. All right. She mumbles something with an uh, independent air, then chuckles. Story time, isn't it? Uh, yes, we need to discuss what happens. I'm surprised between everything that's going on in your land, you find interest in such a trifle as a devil's plot and family troubles of two lowly tieflings. <sighs> You seem unhappy that Kaliki and I decided to summon you to save the Sweet Tooth. You are my patron, and you have the right to give orders and decide how to fight your battles, but the same is not true of my sister. She risked my life for the second time, and that's not something I take lightly. Let me remind you, the first time I died, it was because of her uh, virtuous trickery. I died alone, desperate, with a clear understanding of what was happening and what fate awaited me. Uh, do you understand what the forefather is trying to achieve? He explained everything. With his uh, devilish dedication to detail, he considers his offspring a valuable investment. And me, well, I'm his property, and my death didn't annul the contract, but I suspect he has another motive. You know, the demiville vigors uh, like the forefather live for one thing, twisting the souls of believers in other deities and bringing them under the reign of Asmodeus. Hell does not 
forgive mistakes and the forefather was well regarded there but his valuable investment slipped his grasp he must be rescued by another deity that must be unbearable for him he did not uh, he will do anything uh, it takes uh, anything it takes us anything it takes to take us back okay or me at least all right so what can we do I'd say we should uh, figure out how to stop the forefather from carrying out his plan. He's stronger than you or I, and only Nethus' power uh, that keeps him at bay for now. Only someone with a death wish would stand against a deity or his herald. But for now, all we can do is wait. You need to have a chat with your sister. Uh, we have discussed what happened. Yes, uh, you have a right. What... Uh, so why do you think she's angry with you? You saw and heard everything back there, uh, back then. My heart was like a pot boiling with scalding po uh, poison. I shouldn't be angry at my sister, I know, but I'm so tired. It seems like a nightmare we endured in Quindra has returned to us. Whatever we do, we keep hurting each other. Uh, what can we do now? I'm afraid all we can do is wait. The devil promised uh it's not the end yet and that he'll make us break uh nethus other condition i wish i knew how he was going to do that because that means that kenneth and i will meet again uh what can we do now uh, sorry that's it all right okay cool Alrighty. so that means that the chase my shadow i've only got one more companion quest to do which is head off to the valley of the dead so i'm thinking for now that's what we're going to leave today's session what i'll do is um during the i'll level up the characters and then during the um uh while i'm off off recording i'll find this this tomb and then we'll we'll get on to that in the next session but for now thank you all very much for watching please remember to like and subscribe i have been your humble bard tim and be sure to come back for the next session of aurora plays pathfinder kingmaker bye